Today is episode 93 of This Week in BJJ. I'm Budo Jake, and today is October 28th. On today's show, we have Paolo Gilobel. He does an interview and uh, some really cool techniques. But before that, I want to share with you one new product. This is a product that's been out of stock for a while. It's the Nogi Phantom Shorts, upgraded to the 2.5 model. And they're available in all sizes right now. We made a small run of them just in time for the Nogi Worlds. So if you need a pair of great grappling shorts that last you a long time, check out the Nogi Phantom 2.5, only available on BudoVideos.com. Now, before we get into the interview with Paolo Gilobel, I have a viewer's email. This one came in from James. He says, I'm always getting smashed by upper belts. What instructional will help me the fastest? Well, James, uh, I had the same problem, and I think almost all beginners have the same problems, uh, and that is getting uh, smashed by uh, the more experienced players. And for me, what helped me out a lot in terms of instructionals was focusing on escapes. The more you can learn to get out of bad positions, the longer you're going to be in the game, the less you're going to be smashed, the less you're going to be submitted. And um, I have two instructionals that I'll recommend. The first one is if you are training in the gi. That one is called Great Escapes by Gustavo Machado. And uh, it's an excellent instructional. It goes through almost all the major positions, many of uh, the most common submissions. And uh, Gustavo Machado is super talented. And his partner, his uke in the video, is Chingia, who's a very well-known black belt. So you get to see the attacks being applied uh, very effectively and the defenses as well. I learned a lot from that instructional years ago when it came out. So even though it's a few years old, uh, you can still learn a lot from that one. Again, that's Great Escapes by Gustavo Machado, available on DVD on budovideos.com. And the other one is one that we produced a few years back with Bill Cooper. This one is a Nogi instructional, and that one is called The Escapes. And, um, and Bill goes through a ton of maybe a little more uh, unorthodox positions, but uh, he has some very unique ways to escape, and uh, you can learn a lot from that one as well. That's available on DVD, on demand, and also in the App Store. So uh, there you go, two instructionals to help you to stop getting smashed in your jiu-jitsu training. Thanks for the question, James. And if you have a question you'd like to submit, just send it to twibjj at buddhavideos.com, and I'll pick one out for the next episode. Okay, now it's time for the interview and techniques with Paolo Gilabel. Who is Paolo Gilabel? He is a fifth degree black belt under Jorge Pereira, and uh, Jorge is a black belt under Hickson Gracie. And uh, Paolo has a school not too far from here in San Clemente. He's been there for a number of years. He also trains regularly with Salo and Shanji Hibero. And uh, he also wrote a really cool book that I'm reading right now called The 21 Immutable Laws of BJJ. So really interesting guy. I think you're going to enjoy this one. Here we go. Interview and techniques with Paolo Gilobel. Paolo, thanks for coming in today. Oh, thank you for having me here. Yeah, we don't live too far apart, but we don't get a chance to hang out too often. Yeah, sure. Yeah. But I've enjoyed watching you compete for so long, and uh, so it's great having you here. So, first of all, um, I want to talk about your teacher. I understand that you received all your belts from Jorge Pereira, mm -hmm. um, which when I think of him, I remember one of his events called Rio Heroes, uh, which some of you guys that might not have been training for too long might not know. It was the craziest MMA event I've ever seen. Yeah. Tell me a little bit about Jorge and maybe about Real Heroes. Okay, so uh, well, with the Real Heroes, actually I wasn't already, I was not with George anymore, but um, George is, um, he, you know, he grew up training Jiu Jitsu back in the days with Hickson and those guys. And he, you know, he's a really a guy that, that wears the jiu-jitsu shirt above anything else. He would die for jiu-jitsu, you know? And he's, you know, he's a guy that, if you believe in reincarnation, I think it would be a guy that was a samurai general that was brought into his body, you know? He has this, uh, you gotta train until you die, you know, you gotta be a warrior, you know? So I grew up that he actually, he, he, he the one that taught me how to be a good competitor. You know, he like, he's always like, you gotta go, you gotta push yourself, you gotta always challenge yourself, you know? And, uh, but the real heroes, I think it was, a, was an opportunity he had to bring back the roots of uh, Value Tudo used to be, mm -hmm. you know? And because when we, when I started Jiu Jitsu, the, the Value Tudo that people call today mixed martial arts, you know? Which, and then they call No Holes Barred, 
used to be no time, no gloves, no rules, you know. Actually, then you start to make the rules like, oh, we cannot eye gouge or poke somebody's eyes or bite or kick the person in the nuts. Mm -hmm. Other than that, man, and do whatever you anything want. Anything goes, huh? And so you got to survive, and, and that was the rules of that. That was made jujitsu become the martial art it is because uh, jujitsu, in my opinion, is the only martial art style that can survive as long as it is necessary. You mm -hmm. can go for an hour, like I said, Master Ali went for three hours and 43 minutes, tried to do that kickboxing. Yeah, you know? no way. So, so he tried to rescue that. It was kind of like the way he did was like a low budget thing. I think I understand in him, mm -hmm. you know, he tried to create some kind of controversy, you know, and, and then he put some places and sometimes things happening in his nature of like a, being a warrior is like everything goes. So glasses fall on people, I just keep on going, you know? Yeah, for you guys that haven't seen it, maybe you can find some of the footage on, uh, on YouTube or something. We used to sell the DVDs many years ago, but Real Heroes is this crazy event held in, in Jorge's uh, dojo where it was student against student or guys off the street. I don't know where they came from, but they were in geese many times and just punching each other. And, and uh, one guy tapped and then he said, no, I didn't tap. And he goes, all right, do it again. And they would just go at it. And it was, it was so bloody, so violent. Men versus women even. Yeah, it well. It was insane. It you know, if women wants to do it, you know, so be it, you know? Yeah. Actually, the women won, right? I, mean. I think so. I think so. I think she was trained and the guy wasn't. Or something. Yeah, yeah, well, see? Power <laughs> jiu-jitsu. Right. And, you know, Jorge Pereira, when people think of Hicks and Gracie's black belt, well, I wonder, like, did, did his jiu-jitsu look like Hickson's or, or, or not? Man, Jorge was a um, guard guy, you know? He, he was really good, which actually... One thing I really got from him is the close guard. He has an amazing close guard and arm bars from there. And Omo Platas, which another guy that we know, Nuno Shambri, got from. Because Nuno Shambri used to be his student, just like me. Mm. And he became a really good in Omo Platas with George. Mm. You know, I remember Nuno as a, almost a purple belt. He was already like doing Omo Platas like from anywhere as a blue and purple, you know what I mean? Become, about to become a purple belt. So those are his things, and Hickson is, you know, they have probably a good guard there, but I think Hickson is, uh, his game, you know, is, rea is first is, it goes to, to the submission, but he's also a guy that is very methodic in what he does, mm -hmm. and he's good everywhere, you know, he knows how to distribute his weight well, he's very, strategical and, and you know and don't make and make very few mistakes you know right. but uh, I never had a chance to actually train uh, with Hickson so I know exactly the similarities about and I saw Hickson's uh, uh, fighting in videos you know and by when I started Jiu-Jitsu in 1988 was the year I, I believe it was the year that Hickson came to the United States Mm -hmm. So when he's disappeared, he left Brazil. Mm -hmm. So, you know, the guy that I actually saw from the family that fought a lot was Hoyler, right. you know, which also belonged to the same school. They were all trained together. Mm -hmm. And Hoyler was also good in bottom game and, and top game. So, yeah, so, but he was a good guard, a good guard, and then later developed a little bit of passing guards and, you know, the evolution of Jiu-Jitsu. But I think his strength was having a really good guard. Okay. So I'm sure George was uh, a major influence in your jiu-jitsu. Are there anybody else that has majorly inf impacted your jiu-jitsu? Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. Uh, so I trained Higa Machado and jean Jacques Machado. Uh, they both had a like, huge influence on my jiu-jitsu when I moved here. I trained with them for seven years. Uh, Hickson, when I was young, or Hickson, uh, Higgin, he was like uh, one of the legends of jiu-jitsu as, as Hickson, you know? Mm -hmm. And Jean Jacques, you know, same thing. I remember Jean Jacques, like, I think since Jean Jacques was, a, I think, a brown belt, and no hand, he was like a guy that was very uh, good in submissions, you know. So I learned from them a lot, and also obviously Saulo Ribeiro and Shane Ribeiro, you know. I think uh, the the last uh, we almost ten, almost eight years or nine years training together, you know. So the, I think. I learned a little bit from everybody, mm -hmm. you know. So, uh, George, I learned the, a lot of the basics, and but most of all, I learned the the, the spirit of a of a warrior, you know. 
if you have to point it out, okay, what to point out from him, that's what we're gonna be. Uh, Jean Jacques, one thing I learned for sure is to defend myself. Mm. Because he would give one space, he would pull arm bar out of nowhere. And then I, I learned to keep my arms very well defended. Plus all the attacks he have, and plus all the combinations he have. Um, Hegan, he answered a lot of my questions, you know. Plus he smashed me a lot, you know, so work on my defense. And Saulo and Shandy, you know, that's when I probably refined a lot of my jiu-jitsu because I thought I was more ready to absorb the, the, the knowledge, you know, and I think Saulo is, if you, is the best guard passer in the world. You know, I haven't seen somebody as good as him, like, consistently, and I train for a lot of people. His pressure is unbelievable, you know. I don't know, have you trained him? Yes. I don't know if you call it train, but getting smashed <laughs> by him. Well, it happens to me <laughs> in weekly basis. Uh, and Shanji is the newer version of that, you know, and uh, he has all the qualities, you know, plus his, uh, you know, his way, his approach to fight, you know, very calm mm. and very technical as well for, for a guy that's, you know, a big guy, you know, right. he's, he's, I learned a lot from the, those, those two guys, you know, and Today is funny because I'm hanging out and training with him so much that a lot of my stuff now come from them, even though I was already a uh, form black belt when I got to them, you know? Mm. So Paolo, when you think of someone's development through jiu-jitsu, some of their learning comes from their teacher, some from the internet, you know, videos, instructionals, some from competition, and some from just training with their friends. I don't want to ask you for percentages, but where do you think how do you piece, how does the average student piece all that together? Well, I think having a good teacher and instructor is very important, of course, because um, it's probably the most important thing. Okay, even though there are guys that are really good today that, you know, say they learn a lot of stuff self-taught, but um, the thing that the good teacher, he can point out the details that you're missing out, you know? So a lot of times, we, you know, people watch a lot of YouTube stuff or, or books and, or even see other people do things in a tournament. Uh, but you get the idea and having someone that can point out the major detail that has a, a sensibility to understand the fundamentals of that position and the leverage that the position is coming from and teach you like okay that's that's the main leverage that you have to, to look that's very important um, comp competing is the fast track to learn you know to evolve uh, I mean fast track because your mind you start thinking about jiu-jitsu all the time and as a regular student you don't think about jiu-jitsu you think a lot you know you dream you think about it but it's not the same intensity and same emotion you know so when you compete you wake up in the middle of the, 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 the three in the morning like thinking about the technique or uh, thinking about the opponent then you go there and go to my opinion the you know the ultimate challenge for you know jiu-jitsu practitioner which is go there and and go with other people, you know, and the level of intensity is so high that takes a lot of from the person, you know. And I think when a person comes back to the school, I remember myself doing that every time on Monday after the tournament, I was the better me I could ever be. Mm -hmm. I don't know if that happens to you, yep. but I was like, even winning or losing. Mm -hmm. If losing, obviously, there's two kinds of people that lose, you know, the ones that lose and then. They want to win, and they want to lose, and they think they suck, mm -hmm. right? But if you're one of the ones that won't lose and think they want to win, and look, keep looking, keep getting, trying to find the answers, then you're gonna go back to school, and then you know, and then you're gonna look for specific answers, and that's gonna help improve your game because you gotta, you know, it's hard to learn everything, you know. So, you know, knowing what you have to learn. Uh, and get it done and implement that and, and learn it and move the page, you know, so just f 
go to another chapter, mm -hmm. that's amazing. And tournaments give you that chance. The YouTube um, videos uh, it helps in the fact that it's always in your mind too. You, you see things, so your brain, your subconscious, I think, is retaining that thing. Mm -hmm. And then when you go to the school and going to train, that image of that position is there and it's make it easy for you to maybe sometimes pull it off out of nowhere, you mm -hmm. know, because you've seen before. It's like another thing that you didn't mention, but I really, that's one very important in my a learning curve was observing good guys training w on a dojo while I was there. Mm -hmm. You know, sometimes uh, if you have two guys, for example, Saul and Shanji, right, rolling, why am I going to be rolling at the same time? You know what I mean? If I can skip that one and watch that, that is amazing. That's you know, cool. that's like a lesson that, like, you know, you're going to learn. If you're a good observer, you're going to learn a lot. You know, and if you try to understand, well, well that's what he does. That's so in having good guys to do that and be able to see that, that's very important, too. That's a very good point. And, that, and that's a match that you wouldn't see in competition. Exactly. Right. Exactly. And, you know, in training people sometimes, and then you, they do stuff to you, and you can't see it, like uh, the, the, the defense, you know? And then you see somebody else doing a defense and say, okay, mm -hmm. you know, let me try mimic that. Let me try copy that and see what the result is going to be for me. And then you do it, and then guess what? Now you're moving in the right direction. Right. Okay, so, yeah, it's hard to put a percentage, but you know, having a good instructor, you know, a positive instructor that not only teach you jiu-jitsu, but, you know, have an understanding of jiu-jitsu, but also pushes you to be positive and to be the best of you, and it's very important. Uh, then I think the second one would be uh, watching good fights. Competing is a fast track, obviously, but it doesn't mean if you don't compete, you're not going to get good. It's just the guys that compete are going to get good faster. Right. You know? So I don't know the percentage of it, but... Yeah, no, that totally idea. makes sense. <laughs> and when you speak of competition, you know, if you watch the young black belt adult divisions, it's pretty clear that a lot of those guys want to be world champion. That's their driving force. Sure. But when you look at the masters divisions, the guys over 30, um, often, oftentimes they don't have that dream of being a, a, a world champion. Sometimes they do, but you know, if we be if we're honest about it, the masters world title doesn't have nearly the same yeah. weight as the adult division. So what do you, what drives you to compete after after all your successes in the jiu-jitsu world? Well, the funny thing is this. First, I've been competing for 27 years. I think I only skipped one year. So I, there's a few people out there that have competed for as far as I've been competing, you know? But I was talking to Saulo the other day, and he's a guy just like me. He can't just get away, you know? Like, I think... Uh, the, the, our main reason is we want to still train at our best in school, at the school, you know? And when we go visit some places, you know? And if we don't have a motivation, we're not going to put our asses on the line, you know? And then because, you know, I don't like to lose. He definitely doesn't like to lose, you know? Mm -hmm. And so that gives us the motivation to train harder and eat better and work out, you know, and be more disciplined. Mm -hmm. You see a lot of guys that stop competing. It's hard to be, have the discipline for 27 years or for 30 years or for 40 years. Mm -hmm. You know, it's very easy to have for three, mm -hmm. you know, for six months is much easier. So if you have to, that discipline for 27 years, and I want to have for another 10 or 20, you know, um, a little bit of, of competition, what happens is like, you know, it forces you to do it. You know, you have to do it because if you don't do it, guess what? You're going to lose. And if you start losing a lot, and if you're a guy that like, is like a competitive guy that wants to win, that's going to get in your nerve and then going to push you hard too. Mm -hmm. So I think that's the major, comp uh, major um, factor, you know, because Get a gold medal or not for me, like for me right now, doesn't mean anything. But like, like uh, I, I obviously don't want to win, you know. But the most important is is the the before to get there and the preparation and after because mm -hmm. after I compete, so I competed like a month ago uh, at the World Masters, 
and then I kept myself in shape now and you know so I feel really good right now to compete the next one again so it just keeps pushing you yeah putting your name on that line to compete is is the best diet plan that there is yeah better than sure. Jenny Craig or, or any other yeah, right? <laughs> like, and it's Hundred bucks only. Right. I don't see right. hundred bucks, but yeah, hundred bucks. Yeah. yeah. Some people pay more. You know? Right. You just gotta keep your weight. Keep that. That's a, is a. I think discipline is the. Is the key of success, right? So have be disciplined, you know, and you have a motivation. So you know, people, in, you know, jiu jitsu or in business, you know, they have to have some kind of a goal. Mm -hmm. You know, when you have no goal, it's like you're like a, a boat, in an ocean. Without a sail, you, you know what I mean. There's, you don't, don't know what is helping you or not. You're yeah. just like there drifting. You know, have a goal. You know, you know, like oh, this training was good. This judo, this takedown training was good. This food I ate was good. The the rest I got was good. So everything you do is to get you to to that point. Right. You know.